of it is we went through the voter rolls and we recognized that just based on residency, there were 364,000 ineligible voter records. So with that as a premise, I went to go and meet with Secretary Raffensperger, and here's where things get interesting, because he had already certified the election November 20th. I went and met with him December the 16th, and in that meeting was, was Secretary Raffensperger and many of his staff and others, and we talked about what True the Vote was helping Georgia citizens do by way of filing these elector challenges. And I said, you know, this is a huge number, and it's, it's, it's going to leave a mark, and I'm just letting everybody know it's coming. And Secretary Raffensperger, in, 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 I mean, I'll, I'll never forget it, pulled out a piece of paper, kind of back on the napkin, did a little bit of, of quick math and said, yeah, 364,000, about 14% of Americans move every year. We haven't been able to clean the rolls because of this lawsuit. So, yeah, that sounds about right. That's about how many ineligible records there are. But what they didn't do in certifying and recertifying and all of the audits and all of the things, all of the great efforts that they say they went through, they never went back to look and see how those 364,000 ineligible voters voted. And so now what we know is that 67,000 of them did vote. Flash forward, he's on that call, the fateful call between Secretary Raffensperger and President Trump and others on January the 2nd, and on that call, he knew, because we had just had the meeting two weeks previous, he had already affirmed our methodology, affirmed our numbers, and Steve, what's more, told me, sounds about right, you know, the GOP should have been doing this all along. So it was a cover-up. And when <laughs>